So EJ, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, got a few questions about Prospect, obviously, being the awesome. founder and a judge. I'm sure you've got a lot of insight to give us about the history of Prospect. One of the questions that I asked um, the other judges was, how did you get into Prospect? How did you find out about it? What made you want to join? Uh, but for you, obviously, that's going to be different. So what inspired you to create Prospect? And why did you decide to focus on upcoming okay. talent rather than established talent? So I started Prospect seven years ago now um the reason i wanted to do it was that i had my own internet radio station we wanted to come up with like some kind of awards so it's like the 2013 awards i think i called it it was ridiculous so i wanted to do because all of the awards that we were doing for it like all of them were very much established artists and i think paramore was very big that year and um rudimental was as well mm -hmm. but we didn't really have anything that was new i've always wanted to look at like new talent like people who bring that freshness to the music industry as such the inspiration behind it was i was obviously i'm, I'm a big fan of the brits and obviously they had the critics choice award uh, now known as rising star now i was loving the kind of artists that were kind of showcased from that obviously adele ellie golding florence florence and machine as well who mm -hmm. are actually one of my favorite bands of all time i wanted to <laughs> channel something like that but also with the bbc sound off competitions that every year like I think the year before Heim won and I was a, um, I was a massive fan of Heim at the time and still and still am now yeah and I, I just thought well let's try and let's try and discover like new talent let's try and let's try and go with it and see like if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't and here we are seven years later yeah, <laughs> and so do you think that that is something that makes prospects stand out from other music award shows the fact that you're focusing on upcoming talent and and giving them a platform and showcasing them to the world and, and then being able to see how they grow in the future. Absolutely. And also as well, with a lot of these different kind of things, so with um, the Critics' Choice Awards and with um, with the BBC Sound Off competition, that is more of a critics thing. What, what makes us different is the fact that we actually include the public votes and mm -hmm. we get the public's take on it because obviously with like with the public and stuff like that like it's them that actually make these artists big it's not yeah. just press or critics or anything like that yeah, it's, it's the fans fun. like you could have like the best album in the world or like you could be the best band in the world you could have the best album the best songs but if you've got no one there to listen to it or no one yeah. there to really like if you've got no one there to who really likes it then what's the what's the point what we found this year and in, in other years as well is the public's opinions are very different to our, like to us as judges. A few years ago, uh, Louis Capaldi uh, was nominated. I'm not the biggest fan of Louis Capaldi personally, yeah. um, but the public absolutely loved him. Like yeah. they absolutely loved him, and he was one of the uh, favourites to win that year. So, what have you been listening to during the lockdown period? What's been on your playlist? What have you been listening to? I've been listening to everything. Like I always listen to everything. This, like anyway, but yeah. this year in particular, because I'm always busy doing other projects, and so it's given me a chance to listen to more bands and discover new, well, not just new talent, but just artists that I haven't really given the time of day before. So I'm I'm loving Phoebe Bridges at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. She's got, uh, she released her second album, Punisher, I think. I fell in love with her and it made me go back into some of her older discography as well. I've been listening to a lot of indie music as well. Yeah. Um, like, so uh, The Big Moon's been on, on repeat, like all year, Bombay's been on repeat, all year, Bombay Bicycle Club, I mean. Mm -hmm. Uh, and a lot of like newer stuff as well and I've recently been listening to a lot of electronic music like what I was listening to years ago I don't know Wolf Alice, Billie Eilish uh, I had a metal band on earlier as well I've been buying so many records and it's it's unreal and yeah. my collection probably gone up by about 25 percent or something oh, wow. during for during the lockdown period so a good a good mix then a really good mix absolutely obviously covid has had like a massive impact on all industries but i think the music industry and the entertainment industry especially do you think that next year it will sort of bounce back everybody will be going back to festivals and concerts or do you think that it will uh, take a bit more of a time to recover because COVID has had such a huge impact on it. Well, I bloody hope it happens again. <laughs> um, I really do because I'm the kind of person that will go to a gig at least every week if I get the opportunity. Um, I'd, go, I'd go every day if I had the opportunity. I don't think it would take a lot of time to do so. Obviously, we've got like the vaccine that could be, well, it's hopefully coming out very soon. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be helpful 
dropping out and no ticket master were looking at like having a scheme where because where people who go to gigs and stuff like that can kind of register to say if they've had the vaccine. Mm-hmm. So it's certainly looking up. I think we'll definitely be on the mend by around May time, which is when festival season really kicks off. I would absolutely love it because I am dying. Yeah, I need to go to a festival. I need to, I need that because it's, um, and I think everyone really wants that as well. Everyone really misses that. Yeah. Um, like, I'm not sure that as in for me at a gig, like, it's where I get my it's where I get my high yeah all that serotonin basically and yeah yeah. I was just about to say I think a lot of people hoping like using that as a thing to like to look forward to you know going to festivals Mm. gigs meeting their favorite bands sticking with the same theme covid um smaller artists and venues seem to have been hit especially hard uh what do you think that the public can do to support their local music scene and their local artists who obviously aren't gigging at the minute it's a really crap time for the music industry anyway because the vast majority of artists make their money through live music and yeah. through merchandise sales and st- and everything like that so uh, i think i read on the bbc a few weeks ago that uh, musicians will be uh, losing two-thirds of their annual income which wow. is absolutely horrible music venues that i've absolutely loved have shut down and stuff like that and it's horrible what i would do is i would keep buying merch because obviously um bands merch um gig merch as well i know for example for bodega who really really like nicely decided to sponsor us this year um they've got a load of um merch out of the minute rock city and nottingham's got a load of that i'm sure like lots of venues across the country have that so Mm -hmm. buy stuff like that when the restriction kind of ease a little bit and you can go and have a drink in there um then go and have a drink and get involved in like anything like that that yeah just keep buying tickets keep buying albums um a lot of artists are doing uh paid live streams at the minute keep mm-hmm. buying tickets to those it might not be exactly the same as being there but it's the best we're going to get at the moment yeah. and, and it's, support right. well. it's about supporting them yeah the more support that our industry gets right now the better and the only way we're going to get that because obviously the government don't want to support us and stuff like that i'm not going to get political but they don't want to support us they want like as creatives to retrain and the only way we can really get that is through the people and the people actually giving back to the music industry it's like go check out that artist go check out the albums don't just don't just listen to a song on spotify like if they've got a physical release like a cd a vinyl um a tape a cassette or anything like that Mm. go buy it because you have no idea how much that helps like you have no idea at all and yeah that's what that's what I could suggest yeah so um looking into more positive vibes uh going into 2021 (laughs) what genre if you could pick one genre that you would absolutely love to see uh like in the charts on the radio what would you choose well I've always been a massive fan of indie music I'm an indie kid uh first and foremost and I know uh, like and definitely in the 90s and the early noughties like we had like this big surge of indie music so but like obviously the first genre was pop music and then the second was more was more indie and that's now turning to hip-hop and grime which is absolutely fantastic absolutely brilliant yeah um but i want to see i want to see indie back in it again i want to see like another chart war between like you know like how um oasis and blur they had that massive chart battle in the 90s mm-hmm. i want to see something like that with um like smaller indie bands so like for example blossoms versus catfish and oh, I, I know Blossom. they're massive bands and yeah they're amazing they were actually the last band i went to see before lockdown and really they were brilliant yeah, yeah i but- saw them i saw them at leeds festival and i knew like one or two of their songs and i think we were waiting for like 21 pilots or something so like and they were the set before so like we had to watch them and like i actually really got into them sort of by accident just by so seeing good. them at a festival <laughs> having like a blossoms versus catfish and a bottle men Mm. not just for number one album but for number one single that would be absolutely fantastic we need that in more genres rather than just pop and 
grime and yes. hip hop. So I think indie music, absolutely. Out of all the prospect contestants that we've ever had, who has been your favourite and why? You can't ask me that. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like picking between your picking a favourite between your children? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Every single artist that we've put forward has been has been fantastic. As in, fair enough. Some of them might not have been as well known as they were back then or some of them haven't really had their peak yet and yeah. that's and that's okay but I think for me if we're talking about personal picks it's got to be Wolf Alice for me. Uh, Wolf Alice are a band that I've fallen in love with for such a long time like as in I was a, definitely a big fan of them uh, towards their first album and when they were nominated for Prospect and when they were for Runners Up and I was very happy at that. I was also very surprised at that result. They did a secret set at Leeds Festival um, about a couple of weeks before their sophomore album Visions of a Life came out. I've been a massive fan from there. Visions of a Life is actually one of my favourite albums of all time. Mm. One of my favourite live acts to see. Obviously the album won the Mercury Prize as well which is incredible. I think for me in terms of lyrical content they've got it in terms of sound they've got it they resonate so much with me absolutely say wolf alice so if you could choose one song title to describe 2020 what would you choose oh one? that is a tough one and now all of the songs that i've ever Which thought one? of has just gone out of my head what's the instinct uh, what's, the fir- what's the first be? thing that you think of okay one that sticks out in my head um is white privilege by Sam Pender. Oh, um, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe not because of the, uh, maybe definitely not because of the pandemic and stuff like that, but sheer yeah, because of Black Lives Matter and and everything that's been going off, um, yeah. we've realised how much of a problem this is. Yeah. And he, he, like, he wrote this song last year on his album, and it definitely resonated with me and stuff like that. And it's even more so now like and obviously with everything that's been going off in the world like it's definitely made me realize that that, like because I'll be honest I didn't realize to the extent of how much this was going on until this and that is because of my white privilege yeah for sure and I think a lot of other people have realized that and 2020 is kind of like the year where everyone kind of wakes up and realizes yeah, what the hell is something needs to change yeah it's going on in the world exactly so i would definitely say white privilege by sam bender cool um so if you could describe this year's prospect nominees in one word what would you choose <sighs> that's a tough one isn't it? can i explain why yeah yeah say the, you can okay. say the word and then explain why diverse every year we've always had like one genre dominate the list uh-huh. This year, for the first time, we haven't got that. I'll give you a little teaser as well. We've got artists that from genres that we've never included before. And I feel like out of any year, 2020 is the year for that to happen. Yeah. Because obviously with the pandemic, and if we could show these artists from, the, from this list, and we have, some, and we have um, listeners who avid pop fans avid indie fans but if we could show these people and introduce them to another style of music then that can create the people like the fans of the future the next musicians 2020 is the year where that needs to happen no i I agree i think that's a really good choice so um let's move on to the quick fire round Okay, excellent. Let's do it. I'm going to give you two words and you've got to pick which one you're drawn to, okay? Pop or rock? Pop. Toast or cereal? Cereal. Uh, Intimate gig or stadium show? Intimate, instantly, intimate gig. Uh, Loud or quiet? Loud. Pub or club? Pub. Old music or new music? I hate you, you're fired. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I run a new music competition. It's got to be new music. Mm-hmm. Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify, instantly. Uh, Christmas or New Year? New Year. Not a fan of Christmas. Oh, what? I love Christmas. All right, that's it. Well done. You passed the quick fire round. Hey, awesome. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to ask you to do is, and I've asked this for the other judges and I've done this myself, is to write down the prediction of who you think is going to win 
this year's Prospect Music Award. Now this is who I think is going to win. Yeah, who you think is going to win. Oh. It's a tough choice, isn't it? I think there's, there's quite a few. Mm. For me, in my head, there's, it's between two. I think... Okay. I think go I've got you, it. Go with your gut. What has your gut telling you? I've made my prediction. <gasps> He's done it. Right. You're not allowed to show that to anyone. Don't You're not allowed to change it. No cheating. And we'll reveal who everybody's chosen at oh. the time. Exciting. Okay. Let's do it. I can't wait. I, I know. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. It was really interesting to hear some of your views and your insight onto Prospect and a bit about the history and stuff. Have you got anything else that you want to say to the public? Um, tune in. 6th of December, 5pm, where this one is going to be announcing our 25 and trust me this is not a year to be to be missed